Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by and you got here just in time. That is right, just in time. You'll have to pardon the air conditioner noise. It's hot. So I got the portable air conditioner running here in the garage to just kind of help bring the temperature down a little bit. It's not cool, but it's better than it is outside. Seven day straight, 100 degree stretch. Anyway, had a big box delivered. And I'm gonna unpack it, show you what's in it, and then we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do with what's in this big box. Kinda wobbly. All right. So we have a new channel sponsor. That would be Striper Suspension Company. That's right. I said suspension company. They're an American company. They make parts specifically for super duty trucks. I love Trudy Thunder. Make no mistake. I love my stuff, my auto level system. But there are times, and multiple times this has happened, where I bottom out on a pothole or just the road is bad. The last visit to Clear Lake Park, I drug uh, uh, the landing gear a little bit. The front landing gear mostly, not, not the rear. That is a leveling spacer for the F for the Super Duty truck for Trudy. Those are really nice too. It's a solid aluminum billet. It's a two inch lift. It's a two inch level. So we're just going to raise the front end of the Super Duty up a little bit. I put a, I put a two inch lift on White Lightning. I really like having that extra height. Comes with bolts. So while I was in my, having my conversation with the good folks at Striker, I told them about the steering beating me up. And they said, oh, we, we, we can solve that too. Because they specialize in super duty suspension. That's right. You're counting. Hope you're counting. Lots of bolts. Lots of parts. Lots of we'll start with the big one.
Cootie getting a little bling. A little bling bling. Just a little. We don't need a whole lot of bling. What we need more than anything else is comfort as we are rolling down the road. While I'm driving down the road. you haven't figured out exactly what it, it is this is a dual stabilizer kit now when I put the when I put the Bilstein steering damper on there I noticed that we didn't have the full turn I sheared a bolt not too long ago. I think it was from hitting a big pothole on I-20. Uh, and it kind of messed up the steering damper when I hit that big pothole. So, I'm gonna make sure that doesn't happen again. We're gonna go with a dual setup. I've not ever installed anything like this, so this will be a a DIY first timer DIY install because it's actually two separate projects the two inch lift has to go in to so that there's space to accommodate the dual stabilizer one will be putting in the two inch lift they, they basically just go under the spring and then we will be putting in the stabilizer, dual stabilizer. Uh, I'll be doing the project all at one time. So let me gather my stuff. It's going to be, I'm going to be doing this in front of the house. It's 100 degrees. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I don't have a shade tree to work under. I have to put up a, a tent or something. I'll figure it out. But you're gonna get to watch. So let's go to work. Good morning. We are ready, ready to start working on Trudy's front end. We're gonna raise her up two inches. Hold on, we need a tape measure. So right now, We have five inches. Right at five inches of clearance. That's not much clearance. <laughs> we're we're gonna take it to seven. That's better. All right, let me let me make some adjustments and arrangements and get things set up. Our first objective is to take off the front wheels and then drop the front axle to access or to insert our spacer i'm gonna go to work for it we gotta go to work before it starts getting hot got the wheels off that's a big old rotor right there so we have a few few disconnects to make one two and three the bottom of the shock We've also got to take that loose so that the brake lines will move freely. According to my research, we should not have to drop anything else. But if push comes to shove, I might have to separate that joint. Hopefully not. We just need to drop this enough to put that two inch spacer under the, under this spring. Axles drop, springs are out. So we have a total to, whew, to get to reach this point, we have the shock bolt, 
the nut for the torsion arm and the two bolts holding the brake lines. That's another, there's one more to take out. It's in here. And then we go back with the spacers. So let me get one out and we'll take a look at it. So this is the part we needed to access. So now our, our new billet goes right on top of that. So let me go get those, I'll be back. This, the lower spring bracket is actually marked front. So you don't have to worry about getting that mixed up. And then the billet, the spacer, is going in like that. And I am putting thread lock on there. Because I don't want that moving, vibrating out. Now the next part is going to be the tricky one. And that is getting the spring back in place. Now that I'm two inches higher. Okay, so we're not perfectly aligned because of the way the axle's dropping, it's pushing this forward. So when we start to go back up, we just have to keep that in mind. And surprisingly enough, the passenger side was, was more of a challenge to get the spring seated. You gotta make sure your, the lower end of the coil there is against the stop. But because the weight dynamic, I'm having to use two jacks, which requires some finesse. And what I ended up doing was, is the farther down you go, the, the farther out this goes. So I ended up putting a, a ratchet strap around that spring and compressing it a little bit. That's a, a trick I picked up from someone else that was doing this. I had to take no credit for any of it. And now I'm ready to take the whole assembly back up, and reverse the process. So let me get that done and I'll be back. Step one, two inch, two inch lift on the front is done. The only, the only real 
problem I had was making sure that I needed, I had two jacks because that axle gets, I mean, all the weight is over here. But anyway, so a big heavy jack to lift the transfer case and then just a smaller jack to help control that other side. Uh, other than that, needing to compress the spring on the passenger side, that was it. I mean, it wasn't difficult. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a professional mechanic. I'm just a dude with a camera and a well-managed budget. So, total elapsed time I've been out here is about two hours. But a lot of that is just the, I don't, I'm not in a hurry, one. Uh, and I'm taking things, I'm, I'm being methodical so that I don't make a mistake. Uh, if you're not comfortable working around heavy equipment on jacks, if you don't feel that you have the mechanical mind to handle this, you probably ought to have someone do it. Uh, if you have a set of wrenches and a jack and, and you like tinkering with stuff, this, this was a uh, relatively uncomplicated process. I'm going to move on to step number two, which is working on replacing the steering damper and that's, that's going to require some creeper work i'm installing the striker the, the striker dual stabilizer kit on my f550 super duty motorhome <clears throat> instructions are they're kind of vague if you've never done this before mostly because it's not a step-by-step -step, it's more of a we're talking to people that have done this kind of thing before so it identifies all your parts and what goes with which one. And then we have some hard to decipher black and white pictures. But from what I can gather, what, I, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off two bolts on the front of the differential case and they're gonna go here. So that goes on like that. And then we've got a clamp that goes on there that wraps, encases the axle. I think I'm just going to have to get under there and start twisting screws. All right, let's go to it. I have it installed. I have the whole assembly in place. So we've connected, we've removed two bolts from the transfer case here. There's two bolt holes on the bracket. That lines it up. And then there's a bracket that goes around. Hold on. Let me get you in here. It goes around the axle. Like that. That gives you your stability. And then we move back out here to this point. This is where center line is for your two shock struts. And then following down passenger side, it goes all the way over to this bracket. You can see the we're on the very tail end of the tie rod right there according to the, to the instructions we want the shock the strut at the halfway point when the wheels are straight and that would be six and a half inches with these basic struts it's a it's a pretty simple install the instructions are a little the instructions are a little difficult to sort out the pictures are not very good uh, that's one one thing that they could improve upon so let me let me sort things out here got to verify wheels are straight and all that and, and i'll be back before i put the wheels back on thought i'd give you a, a look see from above 
Well, you can see where the tie rod end connects. All right. It's starting to get hot. I finished just in time because it's really getting hot. Hold on. Let me close the door. That way you can see what it looks like. Little jack pad. See how far off the ground that is. Now. All right. We are seven inches. That's way better than a five. But now we kind of... It is running, definitely running to the back, but that's all right. I have, I have something in mind for the rear end anyway, because it's squishy. When we go across a uneven road, the coach pitches. So we need more, more lift on the rear end. And I'm thinking airbags might be the simple solution. I don't know, what do you guys think? Airbags or another, another spring? I think another spring would be a little more difficult than an airbag. I have no parts left over. That's the important thing. <laughs> the only parts I have left over are the bolts that I took out of the, the, the spring seat and my instruction pamphlet. The instruction pamphlet tells you what to do, but it's not 100% clear if you've never, never worked with it before. So maybe my video will help you. It, if you don't feel that you're capable, don't try it. Have to pay someone else to do it. She's looking good. Now to, I'm gonna take it for a test drive. See how, see how that steering is. In, if it's improved, if we made a difference, I'm pretty sure we did. If you're driving an F550 motorhome and you want to do the the dual stabilizer on the front end, Striker. Striker can help you solve that puzzle. Uh, you, you're most likely gonna need to put a two inch leveling block on the front, such as what I did. That way you've got clearance for the, the assembly to go in. And you don't, and you get an extra two inches so you don't have to worry about your jacks bumping stuff. Those are expensive to fix. Striker's products are on Amazon. I'll put a link in the card up there and I will include these this kit these parts in a an Amazon shopping list for the F550 and that will be in the description as well as in the card above what are your thoughts you think I overdid this tell me down there in the comments below what your thoughts are on on true, the way tree stands now i like it I, I i feel much better having a little more clearance on the front end yeah i like it tell me what tell me what you think you like it did i waste my time if you found this to be of value or interest i'd be i'd appreciate it if you'd click on the thumbs up if you've not already i would be most honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button i do travel content DIY home improvements on my motor home. Uh, I do tent camping. I got all kinds of stuff going on here at Dude RV. I think you'll enjoy, find something to enjoy. And for those of you who have been following along, thank you. By the time you see this, we'll have, we'll have passed 16,000 and I'm most honored. Thank you so much for that. And for my patrons, it is most appreciated. You guys rock. Y'all come back now, you hear?